the North Cat, baby, I'm a boss. Carolina barbecue sauce with the slaw. I'm the safe, the seller, and the vault. I'm the best, the effect, and the cause. I'm the law. Maybe some can't, and they'll blame it on bad luck, which you can't always do, but now it is on to round two, match two of day one here in the grand finals. The plane is in the sky. We've got to find out where it's going to head. Reassess, reset, and go again. Second map of Erangel. You now need to look at what went wrong. Have a quick discussion. Put it behind you now, because that's your one bad game over and done with. First playing path, we're over on the west. We start in the north, we end down south. Teams will be struggling. If they like to loot on the east coast of Erangel, you're going to have to go for a few adjustments. Even oh. grabbing the vehicles will be late. I'm looking a little bit towards Georgia, Paul. I want to see where they split apart. I don't think... Teams will be right on top of each other, but I am a little curious if someone gets close. Looks like VC and Genji are quite close by, and I'm wondering where they head towards. I imagine one will take Georgia Pole Town itself, the other may go hospital or the fields below, look for the vehicles. And again, we look towards a military island. That is certainly up for grabs. FaZe may be considering that, but they are not alone. Behind you, you have the hills. It's going to be rough to get across there. I would expect a few teams to make a hard pull-up on that. It will be difficult, speaking of hard pull-ups. Oh, Tempo Storm are just feeding the Giants here. There's another one as well. Tempo, what are you doing? Why are you just driving into Death's embrace? Will anyone else fall foul to a similar move? Enter's Force are looking for their home and there isn't much here. It's time to start looking at divots and dips and anything that may give you a home. Some rest for the wicked as Enter's Force do find a bit of placement. TSM forced to move up towards Enter's Ace. Up on the hillside as TSM desperate to make a name for themselves off that first little bit of a disappointing start. They've been there a while. How have they not scouted that? They've heard the shots, they've seen the players. Why would you go head over heels direct into that conflict? Genesis moving up towards W Click as well. I'm seeing pre nades coming out. That's been lobbed. It's beautiful. It goes too far, but Profi and H win turn up and Harold waits through the smoke. He's trying to play it out. Kmine's tag is there, but Harold's still trying to patrol around here. But Genesis, he's he's surrounded on all fronts. One nade. He's trying to feed it out, but it's just too short. And now he's dropping them down. He's found H win. Can he hold back the entirety of Genesis? This gives it the information that he needs as to where their potential location is, but seeing the nade come out also feeds the info back to W Click. As a Lone Ranger, you've got to hit the deck and hold for now. Itzy onto Microfy in the kill feed. That's a DP getting the job done. It's only a knock, it's not a confermation. That could be across the building scenario as well. They're breach. actually at the walls. I'm surprised they've come so damn close. It's the Rumblers. We know they're up for a fight. Harold goes down. That was Nerf's nade, I think, hitting towards it. Fuzz face unraveling revealing the Rumblers' plan as Waldo now starts to build. Looks for a way forward as it looks like the Rumblers have been tempered with Microfry being knocked. They want that res. They want them back up. T1 Ooh, is being hit. engaged on and it's a good nade and they might have to push this. It's a complete and utter mortar strike. That's two. We lose one off the back of it as well. Loss HD's gone. That's the conflict. Two Flush. different fights across this map. They are pushing. QM want to wipe T1 out. Ada waits coiled patiently to strike. That hillside could be the downfall for QM. Once they breach, once they peak, he waits. He gets decimated. The trade comes in, but it's from forever. Way off in the distance. T1 trying to make this swift, but they can't handle the pressure. QM are on the verge of wiping them out. They need to clean these kills up fast because 4AM is just stealing. SK Telecom G1, 13th place. Job done for them in this lobby. Rather unfortunate from two different teams, but that's what you have to expect. It's always a viable option. You have to watch every single angle, and when you're cresting on a hill like that, everybody can see you. Face Clan still getting the job done towards the Rumblers. Now we pop on board with TSM. They've already lost one in front of Rory. Michael's down as well. Enters Ace. They wait at the bottom of the hill. I would say, look at the map here. I love the reposition from Mexi and HC trying to surround the Rumblers. It's moving northeast. We're going to have the foot of the hill and VC Lazarus still holding a great deal of cards. Oh, Lazarus, why did you commit that hillside? Now hey, you have they to could sweep down this. I don't think it's the worst thing. Yes, Genesis can find them. That's the one problem. That was the one player they needed. Purdy Curdy to have a look around and see what was what and get them some information because Luke 12's not exactly in a great position himself. He has all of Genji staring at him. 
Lazarus and basically Lazarus enters Ace, TSM. They are all open to BC Gaming and 4 a.m. Na'Vi having nades in hand, not going to go well for themselves. Poker Mordoy is knocked. A doozy is dead in the water as Besseloch is watching on. Senya not having the best of times either. They're just lost in the south with so many in front. QM and Genesis going to be holding them back, pushing them away. But Genesis have eyes on who's in front of them. K-Mind gets the flush, but can they get the rest of the squad just over this hillside? Going for the flank. They're creeping. They're all looking the opposing way. Fuzz face dead. Walled up. That's still the engagement with the Rumblers. Leaning on the side, it's go time now. They're moving up the hill. There's one, he strikes, there's the second. QM is gone. Genesis survive. Huge performance, waiting patiently. Incredible discipline to not engage early. They waited for the shots as Bestelosh makes the last man alive run for Na'Vi. Heading southeast, trying to move into the foothills, trying to move towards TSM, but it's certainly not clear. Genesis now to make their run, but they're late as well. FaZe and the Rumblers, mutually assured destruction out in the west side. Fuzzface fell foul to it, and it looks like they might fall altogether. The Rumblers still have two alive, and I'm seeing AT trying to stop them. Good work from TSM to get Michael back on his feet. I need to deal, unfortunately, with Bestelodge. PL team's fighting it out here on the outskirts of the circle. He's the one that has to make the run. Face Clan is eliminated. The Rumblers, they do the dirty on them. That's another poor finish, unfortunately, if you're a FaZe Clan fan. If they are in your pickums, you're going to be quivering now. The bullet's there, and it's time to dodge because it's time to run. Explosions in abundance. Genesis enters force. Go head to head for this radio tower position. But Genesis have the blue on their back. They have to keep moving. It's step by step. They have to charge forward. Profi trying to do it. He's got the teammates beside him in the car. K Mines trying to send it up there. But Enter's way on the other side. They're dug down. They're in deep. Indigo trying to slow down the roll from the North Americans. Nerf's nade could be huge. If it finds its target, it bounces forward. It's Ooh. good! The trade is there though. Indigo's did find Profi, so it's not without casualty. And the call, no, sir, he's down to nothing. Indigo absolutely taking down Genesis, just about staying alive themselves. Back to back, we lose two North American rosters. We also saw the Rumblers gone. Meanwhile, 4 a.m. have been back building. They've been sat here watching all these engagements unfold. Finally, Circle will force them to move. Everyone else uphill, though. That's just easy pickings and easy points for 4 a.m. Michael is dead. That's the confirmation from ZGG. And there's still plenty of other people who have to make the run. Eight teams stand, Rich. 4 a.m. scare me in this. Gen G scare me in this. Enters A scare me in this. There's a lot to be afraid of. And Na'Vi feels the force of that from 4 a.m. They're controlling the southeast side, but TSM is still the next target. It's in their sights, and they're working on it. You do have Entersace trying to engage as well from the other side. Ira, he's a man who can in certain scenarios like this, but honestly, I think this one might just be too much. Play for placement, play for your life. If you can pick up a frag or two on the way, then why not? But when you've got all four members of 4AM that will soon have eyes on your position, and then directly in front of you have Entis Ace will hear your bullets, for these two rosters, it's hell. Who can get Ira first? Yeah, he's just about alive. It looks like he might be running out of options. That blue is going to force him forward, and there isn't much cover to play to beyond that rock. It will be open terrain, and you can see Forever eyeing it up. He wants to punish. He wants the kill. He can see the fire. Iro, a valiant attempt to stay alive, but they will go down in seventh with TSM. Open terrain, open season. Honestly, there may have been an option there to actually give it up to the blue and, and not give away the points. Remember, you are playing against all these other teams, and if there's, it's a no-win scenario, then why bother feeding the mighty giants that are already still just fighting tooth and nail? 11, I think 10 kills on the board already now for 4 a.m., which is pretty good after the performance in the last round. A team, though, that is having a dead to right. The bullet just... Pings him in the side of the face. Alo has now also been spotted by Entis Ace. Score the taps. Precision work here. There goes Lazarus. We're down to four teams now. 16 players alive. So you know there's some big squads in this. Entis Ace trying to step towards Gen G, and they have a big answer for that. And it's a resounding no. Do not dare try and come towards us. All four players up for Gen G, same for 4 a.m. BC have a phenomenal position on this map. But they do have one player down, they'll have to stick the res, which puts another one out, and only two standing to keep a track of what's going on. 
Gen G now focused on another Korean team up hill, looking towards Entus Ace. They have to deal with this first. Freeze up the side, they've got more room to breathe then. 4 a.m. will creep and peep for now, but it's certainly Entus Ace who are in dire straits. Eventually, the tree line will give away their position and they'll have to fight their way through. Okay, the new circle hits. You do have the fact that VC has one building still in this, but they'll get a great deal of attention. 4 a.m. don't have much cover, so they might have to find the engage. It's time to consider what's your best way forward. How can we fight this? How can we not give it up? Entersace already hitting the deck. They don't want any of it. Gen G, if they try and move forward, they know there's a lot of eyes towards them, but Gen G at least have step in the circle. They're currently, arguably, having the vast amount of their team in this. Now, 4AM are trying to put their sights on VC. Summer's position is formidable here for 4AM to make an entry point into this one. He can look through the little letterbox windows of that building. He's claimed the shack for himself. And single-handedly just keep poking at them, keep being a nuisance and hold them back. It will take a, a worldie of a shot to get him through that letterbox, hit him in the head. Mickey does go down, speaking ahead, Damon finds it. He's disconnected from the rest of the team, so they would have to commit one player to an open run. I don't think that's going to happen. You expect him to die. There we go. Point does go their way. And now 4AM are turning as they are turning tails and trying to flee the scenario. Genji in front, 4AM in the back. Enter Ace are being crushed to death. They can't deal with the pressure that's going their way, and it looks like 4AM might mop up the final few. There's the play up from VC, trying to push themselves forward to get a better position, but under the car, there's no safety. You can't dance with the devil at 4 a.m. and not expect to get burnt. These guys are playing a scary game. They're fighting every step forward here. Genji still hold a great deal of territory. This hillside is huge for them. The taps keep on coming through. Both teams just instantly trying to jump at the bit and knock each other out before they get to that central point. Everybody playing edge here. All three teams left. 11 individual players. Genji Ooh. maybe. He's going for the res? He wants his teammate up, and if you feel you can, why not? I guess they can include 4AM, but I wouldn't like to be tussling with him. You've got to say Genji's position in my eyes is still incredibly strong. It looks like Forever wants to punch VC for this sort of play up here, gonna take the tires out, limit their movement going forward, but it does mean they now have two players to worry about in that hill. It's finally moved away from Gen G. They can no longer use this hillside as their leapfrog point. They can't now work off it. They have to move forward. There are still trees, there is still cover. It's down to the marksman here. How good are you with those minis? How good are you with those SLRs? And how bad do you want this? Nobody's inside the circle, and for all three of these teams, limited movement and limited utility eventually will become a massive factor. The tires have already been taken out from two of these players here. Forever still holding Summer, the angle. Summer's out. Hoping Summer's... that one of them, I mean, he can basically stay here and, and stop it, them flushing from between through the smoke. That's massive. Whether or not they realize the connection was there, but now the teammate Dome might be able to finish the job. Yeah, you can see ZGG being called into action. He needs to support his teammate. Forever's in danger. And you're seeing as to why. Already, way less. Going to connect a few, but not without an answer themselves. This is tip for tap. This is back and forth. TJ Boy's got barely any bullets. No helmet either. Forever trying to get that last heal off, and it is going to be go time. Gen G working their way forward. The smokes are out. The vehicles are here. Esther's working forward, trying to use those smokes for cover. Build a fort. Build a way forward. Forever trying to work in just about unison with the others. But the blue, they're still not safe. He's sticking this position in a hope that VC turn on Gen G and maybe expose themselves. The blue will eventually force them out here. Look at this though, he's holding angle, he's ready for it. 4AM, forever, he was tracking the one player, there is an answer back though, tries to get away with the vehicle, knocks him out of the, so it's a good trade. Pawn for pawn now, they're moving forward. But the chess pieces, there's a limited amount, we're in an open field there here. The blue is forcing these engagements and Pio's creeping. And how's he on this side of the map, Laura? Genji still have all four alive and Pio is coming alive. The beast from the east returns again. Oh! Pio! Huge play from this man coming in as VC are down to two, trying to hold on to do anything they can, but Genji, look, nothing short from God tier. That is absolutely insane to push on the side like that, get the flank and murder both of them. What a time to hit the headshot. This is incredible from Genji. It's a two on three. 
You've got to argue this should be Gen G's game. Let's see what angles VC can play with here. Is there an avenue? Do they have smokes? I see level one vests. One more nade for VC. They're gonna be putting it down and trying to work with it. Gen G hold the line. They hold the peak. DJ not looking so good, but a good nade does come out. But it doesn't feel like VC can get a foothold here. They're desperate for a way in. Uh oh. Power. The Reaper's here. PO's arrived. Three kills already. <laughs> he wants more. He's out for blood. And he's already got it. The taste on the lips. He knows what's in front of them. Look at the HP. They're, they're going to be in the blue any second now. They can't do anything. I think they've realized it. I think they know. It looks like Gen G have done it again. Back to back. GG Gen G. This is the start that you want to see from a world championship team. 42 points in two games this is just world-class PUBG history has been written once again we're only two games in and they're showing rest of the world why they are potentially number one